The October Revolution, Guatemala, 1944 to 1954. In 1519, famous Spanish conquistador Hernán Cortés began the conquest of the New World. By the early 1520s, the Aztec Empire, which was located in what is now Mexico, had fallen under Spanish control. Cortés, his second-in-command, Pedro de Alvarado, was tasked with the conquest of the Mayan area in Central America beginning in 1524. Due to geography and the lack of centralized authority, the last Mayan capital did not fall until 1697. During the colonial period, Guatemala, along with the countries of Honduras, El Salvador, Nicaragua, and Costa Rica, formed the Captaincy General of Guatemala. As part of the Mexican War of Independence, all of New Spain became independent on September 15, 1821. In July of 1823, the old Captaincy General succeeded from the Mexican Empire and formed the United Provinces of Central America. This democratic republic lasted until a civil war broke out in 1838. The Independent Republic of Guatemala was established in 1839 and maintained a state of general instability. Guatemala's liberal revolution came under the leadership of Usto Barrios in 1871. Barrios focused on modernization of Guatemala through agricultural diversity and manufacturing. During this period, coffee became the country's most important export. Barrios' goal of, of reuniting Central America led to his death during the invasion of El Salvador in 1885. For nearly 50 years following his death, Guatemala experienced a great political instability. General Jorge Ubico, who can be seen in the picture, was from a privileged background, so he was educated in Europe and the United States. Rising through the ranks of the military during the wars with El Salvador, Ubico created a name for himself. During 1926, Ubico lost the presidential election to Lazaro Chacon, who later resigned after having a stroke in 1930. Due to the fact that the country was in a dire state, Ubico was nominated by both the liberal and political progressive parties. By 1930, Guatemala, whose economy depended in large on the exportation of coffee, was bankrupt due to the Great Depression. In fact, the value of exports dropped significantly from near $34 million in 1927 to only $9.3 million in 1933. In the early 1930s, Ubico was quite successful in turning Guatemala's economy around despite the Great Depression. His agricultural reforms gave aid to farmers who made the most productive use of their land. During the governmental reorganization, non-essential departments were cut in efforts to decrease the national budget. This also helped Ubico establish more political control over the country. In order to stimulate the economy, foreign investors were invited in. During this time, the United States Corporation, the United Fruit Company, became a major force in Guatemala. As common with many Latin American dictators, Uico did not want to give, con give up his control of the country. Ensuing continuismo resulted in increased paranoia among Uico's regime. If anyone was suspected that they were opposed to Ubico, they were quickly replaced by his supporters. By the late 1930s, the press was being censored. Due to Ubico's successful economic reforms, a middle class had grown in Guatemala. The government chose to ignore the demands for rights because, as Suslo said, Guatemala is ran by and for the oligarchy. The majority of Ubico's opposition came from the younger generation, specifically the students. In August of 1938, there was a strike at a national university due to a change in curriculum. Ubico's response was the militarization of the schools, which would eventually lead to his undoing. All students were required to go through a program that is somewhat equivalent to that of the ROTC program in the United States. Upon graduation, they would be commissioned as off as lieutenants in the military, and in efforts to negate any political authority that they may have gained, graduates were required to spend at least one year serving in the interior provinces of Guatemala before they could return to the capital. This only served to increase agitation among students. In 1943, medical and law students joined to form the univers university Students Association, which would play a key role in the downfall of Uico in the following year. 
Students can be seen protesting in the streets in the picture. In July of 1944, Vico, in an attempt to appease the opposition, met with a stu university student association in the capital. When the association refused to stop protest, Ubico established martial law. Ubico went to extreme lengths, including the threat of bankrupting the country by paying all, off all national debts to ensue that his opposition could not m obtain any funds to stop these protests. By this time, Guatemala's economy depended on the middle class rather than the oligarchy. When urban workers joined with the students in a general strike, the economy halted completely. This forced Ubico to hand over his power to a military junta. In an attempt to maintain control, Congress, who was composed primarily of the oligarchy, elected General Federico Ponce as provisional president in October. This does not appease the opposition, and Ubico's strategic failure of militarizing his main opposition became apparent in October 20, 1944. A group of students and underpaid junior military officers led by Captain Jacobo Arbenz Guzman and Major Francisco Aran surrounded the presidential palace. Ponce was forced into exile. Thereafter, a second military junta was formed. It was composed of Aran Guzman and Jorge Tortulio. This junta actually allowed democratic elections to be held in November of 1944. The winner of these elections was Juan Jose Alvarelu, who is pictured in on the cover of Time. Um, he was a member of the Revolutionary Action Party and was elected president. He took office in March of 1945 and a new constitution was written. This new constitution focused on labor reform, such as minimum wage, near universal suffrage, and health care reform. National hospitals and aid stations were to be built, and citizens were to have minimum protection in terms of social security. Education reform was a major issue in Guatemala. In fact, in 1940, about 70% of the country was illiterate. The most difficult issue was land redistribution. By the 1940s, the United Fruit Company owned large amounts of land and had control of the country's infrastructure. Jacob Arbenz became president of Guatemala in 1951. Land reform was one of the main goals of his platform because in the 1950s, about 2% of the population owned more than 70% of the land. Decree 900 would expropriate unproductive lands from farms that were larger than 223 acres and the landowners would be compensated in the form of government bonds. The largest opposition to land reform was the old oligarchy and the United Fruit Company who lost a lot of land along the Atlantic coast. The United States turned against Arbenz even more when the Guatemalan Party of Labor, which was communist, was legalized in 1952. In 1954, Colonial Carlos Armas, who was backed by the United States CIA, invited, invaded Guatemala. Due to the Cold War fear of the spread of communism, President Eisenhower sanctioned the action out of fear that Guatemala would become the next domino. Arbenz was exiled to Mexico, and Armas became the president. Some historians say that the 1954 coup marks the end of democracy in Guatemala. From 1960 until the peace accords were signed in 1996, Guatemala was involved in a long and bloody civil war. Death toll estimates somewhere between 250 and 300,000 people dead or disappeared. If you're interested in learning more about the Guatemala Revolution and Civil War, check out these sources that are listed in my bibliography.